Welcome back to part two in this recording about SPSS analytics in healthcare. And I'm going to do a demo now. I would like to find out why is cancer spread to lymph node in a very small data set of 53 patients. And I will try different variables like x-ray and type of tumor. So now I'm going to the SPS statistic package. And here is the data. And you can see that there is one variable here called lymph nodes. Because some of the, some of the patients, 53 of them, has done um, operation. And after the answer, of, after the operation, they know if the lymph nodes has cancer or not. But in the end of this file, we have three persons that we don't know anything about. And this is something that I'm going to predict a little bit later in a demo. But we will start very simple. So the first thing I would like to do is a simple table, a custom table. And in these custom tables, you can see that different variables have different kind of icon in the beginning. So if I click on age and drag that to the columns, then automatically we will have a mean value here because this is a numeric variable. That's why you have this ruler icon. In this case, I would like to use another variable and that's my target variable, cancer in lymph nodes, yes or no. And this is a categorical variable so if I put it here, I will automatically get two columns, two categories with counts. And on the rows dimension, I would like to have type of tumor. So we take that one to the rows. If I now click on OK button, I will get a result in your new window, the output window where I have all the results. But now we can see that this is only the frequencies, the count, and I rather would like to have the persons. I would like to have the percentages in rows. So I go back to the same command, and here is a button I can use to get to the latest commands. So I go to the custom tables, and I change the statistics by clicking here on the cancer lymph nodes and go to the summary statistics and change to the row percent instead. I click on it, click the bat button on arrow button, I take away the count. Then I apply and click on OK. And we will have the percentages instead. And we can here see that 55% among the people with a serious tumor has cancer in the lymph nodes. I will continue to do a graph of this. So I go to the chart builder. And here we have a lot of statistical graphs, like Boxplot, for example. But I stay at the bar and take the cluster bar. I drag and drop. And I then choose the variables I would like to have. So I would like to have the type of tumor in the x-axis. And then I have the cancer in lymph nodes variable that I would like to have the cluster in x uh, set color. And I just drag and drop to the right up corner and drop it. Then instead of having a count, as you can see here, I change the statistic to persons instead. And to define what kind of percentages I would like to have, I click on the set parameters. And then I change from grand total, because that's not so interesting. Instead, I use total for each x-axis category and continue and apply and OK. And now we can see a graph that shows us among the serious tumor. We can see the blue, the blue bar here is much bigger or higher than the other one in the other group, the not serious tumor. So that's the same number, the 55% that you saw here in the table. If we would like to go further in this table to have more deeper information, like I showed in part one. I can do that by just go back again, short builder, not short builder, but the table. And uh, in the custom tables, I just clicked on the variable I would like to add 
For this example, the X-ray is interesting. So I put it in the left part of the table and click on OK. So here we have a nested table where I put two variables, two levels. So we can now see that among people with serious type of tumor that has positive discovery in the X-ray result, we have 87.5%. That's the highest number here. That's the most sick people here. So this was a very short demo of how you can use some descriptive statistics commands from the Analyze menu. So let's go back to the slide again, because now we have come to this step in my process. And uh, you saw some statistical measurements that I did. You can also do some proofings by doing statistical tests. And you have all the statistical tests you need in this package, and it's very user-friendly. If we would like to combine variables in the same way I did in the table, but I would like to combine them in a model like logistic regression and use this for the future, how do I do that? And here is an example. I, the reason why I use this logistic regression is to explain the risks for diseases by a multiple statistical model. And in the future, I would like to use this model to predict the risk among quite new patients. So, for example, if a new patient is coming in to, to this clinic, the age is 50, it's a male, it's lab, that, lab data is 100, x-ray is uh, negative, the size is big, the grade is serious. Then, what is the risk that this, this patient has cancer in the lymph nodes? And after putting in these numbers into the model, I will have this risk. It's almost 80% risk that this person has cancer in the lymph nodes. So how could we get help to get this model? So let's do a demo of that. So I jump to the species again and the species statistics. And then I go to the analyze command and the regression and logistic. And this is an advanced statistical model. So we take the cancer in lymph nodes as my dependent target variable. We would like to build a model that explains the risk for this. And it's two groups. And then I use all other variable as independent variable. And then I would like to save the predictions, the probabilities and risks. So I also click on that and continue and OK. So now you first get the results. And if you would like to understand these results, there is a big help here that you can use called case studies that explains with examples how you do the, the advanced analysis, and how you can understand the results that you get. What I can say that is important to know is that this number should be as high as possible. So 70%, 77% is very good. It should be maybe above 65%, something like that. And then we have the results here. That is also is, uh, something that is important to understand. If this number is high, then it's very important, like the X-ray is very important. But I would like to see the predictions. So I go to the data file, and if you go to the very end in this file, we can see that we had some uh, predictions here, two new columns. So we can see these three persons that is quite new patients. We don't know anything because we haven't made any operation yet. Now we can see that the risk is very high for the first person. It's almost 97% risk that this person has cancer in the lymph nodes. 
and the second one has almost 80% risk. So if we should priority a queue here in the healthcare, then we should start to have an investigation of this patient here, because here is the highest risk. And this risk is based on the model, the logistic regression model. So the good thing, the benefit to use SPSS statistics is to be prepared and save costs. So if you know new people that is coming to the clinic, you can prioritize, make some priori priority to these patients who should be treated first. And remember, this is just statistics, so it's 95% sure or correctness. So this is just to help. And then we have this step number five, and that is to do report and reuse the commands. And you have already seen an example how to use the tables command. You can drag and drop. It's, um, you can have a lot of levels. I just used three levels but or two levels. You can do a much bigger table if you would like to do that. And you can handle multiple response. You can also put in some tests in the table. And you can also do some customized layout. And if you remember, I had some colorful tables in my layout that I have chosen. Then a very important thing is that you have everything documented. Everything that you are doing is documented in a notes book. So you can just open that and find out the commands that is behind and the date and the file you have used. And these commands you can also reuse in the future. So that will save you a lot of effort and time. So the benefit with this is that you can customize your tables, you can do documentation, because sometimes it's hard to remember one year after what you have done. You can save a lot of time by reusing the commands. So here is the whole circle, the whole process. So. The whole process starts with collecting data, then you clean data, you test which variables are important to the disease, then you combine some variables to build models for the future, and then you can do a report and reuse the commands again. You maybe don't do every step, but maybe some of the steps, that's okay. But the whole thing is to understand the patients better by just doing some statistical analysis from the data that is collected. And the benefit is that you then can understand the patients better and you get the high quality in the healthcare if you can understand the patients and see the needs for every individual and do some prioritizations correctly. You can save costs because you send the patient to the correct treatment and a lot of time saving because it's easy to use. And then you can predict the one that need urgent care. How could we help you? If you have any question, you have my email address here. So we can find out if this is something that is interesting for you. You also have the blog, SPSS blogging. It's in Swedish. Thank you very much for taking the time and watching this.